Hey guys, this is Kane and Irons, 3D printing application engineer with Hawkridge Systems. Today we're going to take a look at how to simultaneously nest multiple builds for your HP 3D printer using Materialized Magics. This feature is a lifesaver for those who consistently need to nest high quantities of parts that fill up multiple builds. Individually nesting builds one by one can be time consuming and it can be confusing to keep track of parts. Magix has built-in tools to make this a breeze. Let's go ahead and get started. First, we will import a few parts and begin duplicating a few copies of each part. And I'll go ahead and create higher quantities of some of the smaller parts while I'm at it. And next, we're going to open up the 3D nester and set our parameters. We're going to use geometry-based nesting for this example, although this trick will still work with bounding box nesting. The first parameter we want to set is the nesting density threshold. On an HP 3D printer, you generally want to be between 7 and 12% on nesting density for maximum efficiency. We will go ahead and select 10% in this example. Now we'll go into the nesting settings tab, and I like to make sure that we're using the maximum build height, but then we want to click the checkbox titled Enable Multi-Platform Placement. This is the feature that will allow us to automate the packing of multiple builds. And finally, we're going to go into part settings. And then you can see that I'm using fixed bottom plane and 90 degree rotation for this example. Now it is time to start nesting. So it takes a couple of seconds to warm up and then it really gets going fast. And that's normal for geometry based nesting. There we are. Notice the current nesting density in the top right corner. The software is stopping at 10% as we had originally set. And now the second build platform has automatically opened and now we're nesting the next job. You can see those small parts are fitting in nicely, but also notice how this build is struggling to reach 10%, and that's no problem. We'll simply select Keep Status, and we'll keep on going to the next build. Now, build three was very quick. It had some denser parts, and now we're already on to build number four. And this build has a few lightweight parts that take up a lot of space. So again, we're going to struggle to reach anywhere close to 10% here. Now we move on to build number 5. And we have a similar situation here to what we had on build number 4. And finally, the last few parts start off in build number 6. So there we are. So let's go ahead and briefly take a look at each build once more. And keep in mind, I didn't spend time picking the best print orientation for these parts although there are many right answers when running parts on an HP machine. So back at build number one, it looks great. It hit that 10% threshold that we set. And then on build two, we had to stop nesting because it wasn't going to reach our threshold. But it isn't still in a good range for nesting density. On build number three, we had those dense parts. On parts like these gears, I would highly recommend to the customer to hollow them out or internal lattice this would significantly reduce the density of this build and allow us to run more parts in this build at one time. And build number four had those lightweight parts. Not a whole lot you can do here to increase density other than including small parts. If you have a few small parts that have value to your organization, those are great pieces to fill empty space in builds and bring up that nesting density at the same time. Now build number 5 wasn't too bad, pretty close to 7%. And then finally we have build 6 once again, and that's just overflow parts. And so that's all we had for this video. I hope you will find some value in this feature as it saves a good bit of time as opposed to manually nesting consecutive builds. I know our service bureau customers especially are going to love this feature. And as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.